Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and today we've got a brand new review of Virtual Riot's Stealing Fire. Before we go any further, this video was indeed sponsored by the Bowtie Gang. If you want to be a part of the weekly voting and decide what videos go out like this, you can join channel membership today. Looking at the history of Virtual Riot, he released his debut album, There Goes Your Money, back in early 2013. At 16 tracks and over 70 minutes in length, Virtual Riot quickly established himself as one of the leading voices in the early explosion of dubstep and complexstro. That album saw Virtual Riot take on what would become a signature calling card in explicitly digital sounding dubstep by using a smattering of 8-bit sounds and video game samples. Then it took almost a decade later for VR to release his sophomore record Simulation, which saw him explore a full-length project with a heavier emphasis on storytelling. I wouldn't go as far as to say it was a conceptual record in nature, as most of the tracks were self-contained, but there was a significant emphasis on that narrative that we didn't see from his debut. And now, just three years after Simulation, Virtual Riot has officially released his third studio record in, well, Stealing Fire. This album release also sees Virtual Riot making a shift from releasing primarily on Disciple in favor of releasing with Monster Cat for this one. And while this record didn't quite hit the hour mark in runtime, it is yet another longer 16-track record that's packed to the brim with absolute heat. If anything, this record in particular is marked by its lack of dubstep. Over the last decade, Virtual Riot has become synonymous with a particular sound of dubstep, yet he is choosing to forego that industry-imposed label in favor of more trap, house, ambient, and even some drum and bass production here and there. That's not to say that there isn't any dubstep at all, as you've got very straightforward dubstep tunes with tracks like Dino Killer and Believe What You Want. Released as the second single, Believe What You Want is very much a quintessential virtual riot track with long builds, quick fakeouts, and a dense dubstep production. He even threw in a groovy kind of bounce house-like midsection with a, another groovy-like lead melody and synths that sound like it's kind of hitting the end of a plastic piping of sorts. Fans that love this more typical sound design from Virtual Riot will absolutely fall in love with this track. And on the other hand, Dino Killer might actually be one of my least favorite tracks on the album. Almost as if it's an homage to Excision, Dino Killer tracks a narrative whereas we are hunting this mechanized dinosaur. The synths are compressed to hell and metallic in tone, and with the million fakeouts, uh, this was a track that I had a hard time resonating with. Comparing Dino Killer and Believe What You Want almost feels criminal, honestly, as they both fall under the umbrella like dubstep category, but go about it in vastly different ways. Dino Killer in particular is very much a love it or hate it kind of track. But for me, one of the real highlights of this album is the title track, Stealing Fire. Almost as if Virtual Riot has stolen the fire that Skrillex found on his own album, Quest for Fire, that album very evidently had direct influence on the core sound of this track. Teetering the line between bass house and hybrid trap, Virtual Riot brought an intensity and chaoticness to that new Skrillex sound that we've come to know and love. To me, Stealing Fire is the quintessential 2024 song. If I had to encapsulate the last year and a half within EDM as a one singular track, it's absolutely this one. And we can't talk about this album without acknowledging the sheer amount of variety on this thing. Almost to its own detriment, actually. At its core, Stealing Fire is an electronic dance music album. There is so much tonal and genre variety from these 16 tracks that labeling it as anything other than just EDM would do a disservice to a slew of other tracks one way or another. You've got your D&B with Nights on Fire and Ridiculous, your mid-tempo with Given to You and Vroom, your strictly bass music with Star Destroyer and Reconnect, while even rounding things out with a more cinematic ambiance with the intro track Embark and both interludes. And there's still even more subgenres than just these that I mentioned. Of the more outside-of-the-box thinking here, Ridiculous and Holding On to Smoke have to be other highlights of mine. Ridiculous honestly sounds like it could be a Vorso and Mr. Bill collab, more so than a Virtual Riot track. But starting with this kind of wind chime-like lead, that melody quickly morphs into a dense musical motif. And while the song is just a hair over three minutes, it somehow feels longer, and that might actually be largely in part to the major turn the track does in the last 30 seconds, that transforms into this kind of massive, quick, and jittery finale. And speaking of finales, Holding On To Smoke was not the final track I expected, but definitely the one we needed. Opting in for a more drawn-out garage house finale, Raven Gray joins as a vocal feature for an almost seven-minute album closer. Raven Gray's vocal performance is fantastic, and I love how Virtual Riot played around with a variety of drum patterns and sometimes played it a little safer with a standard four-on-the-floor beat, while other times messing around with a more garage-like structure. 
This track has without a doubt the best songwriting on the album, and it's not really even close. But, and this is where the turn comes, at the same time, all this sonic variety and tonal variation gives me a bit of whiplash. It's very clear to me that Virtual Riot's end goal for this record was more closely aligned with his debut album than his latest. If anything, this album is just one big flex and showcase of Virtual Riot's range. Unlike Simulation, VR wasn't aiming for a straightforward front-to-back listening experience with lots of meaning to extrapolate after each listen. Each track is essentially its own self-contained story and setting that is entirely unique to itself. So I have to ask then, why is there an ambient intro and two cinematic interludes? Typically, intros, interludes, and outros are placed within a track list to keep the listener engaged in the storyline that's being told, and to place pockets of some conceptual narrative that the listener doesn't get from the primary tracks. So without even the inkling of a narrative, I have to ask, what's the point of these interludes? Even more so, there are some moments that feel a little unnecessary or even completely useless in some of the individual songs themselves. And it's often those little moments like the Foley intro and outro on Holding On To Smoke that don't really lead into anything, the slowdowns on Dino Killer, or even the fact that Nights On Fire is just a redone version of an older tune. So while I think a majority of this record is some of Virtual Riot's strongest production to date, there are still many moments where his holistic songwriting doesn't always measure up. More than anything, though, this feels like a mixtape rather than an album. And that's totally fine. I'm not expecting every album to have a deep narrative with a cohesive track list. I just maybe had higher expectations based off of what we got a couple years ago with Simulation. In the end, I still think this is a very strong album from Virtual Riot. Probably even his best? But I'm still anticipatory for a record that has the conceptual narrative of Simulation and the variety and production uh, quality from this album, Stealing Fire. This album is full of self-contained tracks that in a vacuum are single-worthy, highlightable tunes. Yet, as a collective whole, this album doesn't really feel like an album, more so a random collection of tracks. Good tracks, just random. But with that, I will score Virtual Riot Stealing Fire a bow tied 7 out of 10. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Do you agree with my take? Do you not? What do you think of this brand new album? I'd love to hear any and all thoughts right down there. But other than that, I'm Dakota from Bowtie Media, and I'll see you guys in another video.